Hi, my name is Alice Kelly. I'm at the University of Maine in the School of Earth and Climate Sciences and the Climate Change Institute. I'm also one of the organizers of the Maine Minute Minders, a group of citizen scientists dedicated to monitoring and documenting the erosion of Maine's shell middens. Today I'd like to tell you about shell middens, or as they're sometimes called, shell mounds or shell heaps. Let's start with taking a look at one. This is one of the best known in Maine. Do you know where it is? It's the Glidden Midden in Newcastle, Maine, just across the river from Damerscotta. You can see the midden from the Damerscotta side of the river at the Whaleback Historic Site. The midden is famous because it's so large. It's one of the largest middens on the east coast north of Georgia and Florida. It's about 30 feet high and almost 300 feet long. How did it get there? Well, middens grow as people pile up shells. They bring in shells and dump them in one place. More shells, the pile gets bigger, and even more pot shells, the pile gets even larger. Most shell middens in Maine were made by the Wabanaki people who have lived here in Maine for thousands of years. The middens on the main coast are made mostly of shell clam shells, but some in the mid coast area are made of oyster shells. Sometimes archaeological material is included with the shell. Artifacts that can be found in shell mounds include indigenous pottery, stone and bone tools, and animal, fish, bird, and reptile bones. Archaeologists can use these artifacts to understand indigenous lifeways from the past, what people ate, how they got their food, when they used the midden area, what season it might have been, and even what games they played. The annual bones and plant seeds in the middens also give archaeologists information about the environment around the midden. Middens are special because they are one of the few places that bone tools and artifacts are preserved in archaeological sites. This is because the weathering of the shells makes the soil less acidic. If we were to look at materials from an interior site in Maine, we would see the stone tools and the pottery, but none of the bone implements or food remains. They would all have been dissolved unless they had been put into a fire. Excavating an archaeological site destroys the site. This is why archaeologists use careful excavation techniques to recover artifacts and other information. The location of everything is carefully recorded. The excavation units are sketched and photographed. Artifacts are photographed. Samples of shells and soil that are, are removed for analysis so that after the dig is over, archaeologists can create it virtually from their records. These are the sorts of things you can see at a shell midden excavation. On the left, you can see the layers of shells. In some middens, you can see the individual basketfuls of shells that were dumped there. In the middle image, the rocks outline the edge of what was a house. I wonder how many people lived there. On the right side, the black marks in the soil show where sticks or posts were pushed into the ground, maybe to hold up a tent or a drying rack for fish, or maybe something else. But not all excavations are careful. Sometimes people who are not archaeologists dig in middens to find artifacts. They call themselves collectors. Archaeologists call them looters. These looters have to dig a lot of shells to find just a few pieces of pottery or broken arrowhead. And when they do, they damage the midden so that it can't tell its story to archaeologists. And the artifacts are lost. The artifacts end up in a mantle or on a windowsill or maybe in a box until the collector loses interest or the looter looted, loses interest. And then those artifacts disappear. A piece of history of people living on the coast for thousands of years.
is gone forever. What did this midden look like over a thousand years ago? Take a canoe trip into the past. This is what the middens might have looked like. Can you see the canoes on the shore? See the smoke rising from the camp ahead? Hear the music? This video takes you back in time to the Damariscotta River approximately 1,500 years ago, when indigenous people lived along the shore and built a group of oyster shell heaps or mounds on the riverbank. Today, the Glidden Midden on the west bank of the river is the last remaining large shell midden on the Atlantic coast north of the state of Georgia. It is currently 10 meters high and 100 meters long. However, this sizable feature is thought to have been much larger in the past and was paired with an even larger shell mound, the Whaleback, on the east bank of the river. The Whaleback was largely removed by mining in the 1880s. Indigenous people have lived on the coast of Maine for thousands of years. In places, they built oyster or clamshell middens. The eroding remnants of some hinted a size rivaling the Glidden Midden. How were these features used? What was their purpose? Archaeologists investigate the middens to answer these questions and to learn about past lifeways and environments. Sit quietly in your birch bark canoe and paddle up the river to see the Damariscotta shell heaps as they might have appeared 1,500 years ago. Listen for the sound of the river and indigenous music before you return downriver. The middens we see today are changed from thousands of years ago. Some are covered by fields, others by forest, but almost all are eroding as a result of climate change. As sea level rises, the waves driven by more frequent and more powerful storms reach ever higher, and more days of freeze and thaw breaks apart the midden. So what can you do? Well, be climate smart. You know how. You know the things to do to prevent global warming, climate change. And if you visit a shell midden, don't dig. If you see an artifact on the beach, take a photo and see the hints on our Middenminders webpage and send that 
photo to us. Adopt a midden with your class or family. Be a midden minder. You can get information about that at our website. Middens are special places. They're special to the indigenous people of Maine, and they're special to Maine's history. So treat them with respect and treat them with care. Thank you.